the show answers, I think, is a great thing. It's hopefully going to make LLMs a lot more accessible. When we talk about what's the architecture going to look like for LLMs in the future, or now, if we can get to the stage where LLMs are performing at a similar level, or potentially even a higher level than the current ones we have today, and have been trained on previous versions, all it speaks to is the reduction in the number of parameters that we're going to require, and therefore the overall storage size. Um, so I think it's a, a great thing. We've obviously seen the appearance of Orca. Um, fingers crossed that maybe goes open source, and we can have a bit more of a play around with it. Uh, I don't know, so I have a question. Um, <laughs> uh, what's the reason? Um, what's the advantages and what are the disadvantages of doing that? You're looking more comfortable with this question than I am, but... <laughs> so there's definitely a... The, the benefit is in the reduction of the number of parameters that they would require to store. So you, you, you base data sets for the large language models, so in the chat you can see I think it's 130 billion something among that number. Orca has dropped down to about 11 billion, so 90% reduction. Um, obviously, much more ethically viable, and also potentially getting to the stage where it's much more viable to house these LLMs internally, on site, cloud, etc. Um, the, the negatives is there's been a lot of papers released where I think someone really tries to push the limits, and they had, I think, 20 generations of LLMs trained on each other. And by generation 20, it just hallucinated with any prompt whatsoever. So there's definitely some tweaking and improvements that can go on in that space, but the overall goal, as far as I see it, is the reduction in size. And I think the, um, the, the purpose of the question goes back to that clarity of data again, isn't it? It's, it's where we're getting the source data from, how we're training that, who's looked at it, who's verified it, who's made sure that it's fair and it's removed that bias and that we're using terms that are inclusive, and how we're training it for things that, that haven't been through that. Uh, you can look at places like Hugging Face, where you've got people that are building their own models and they're just creating them out of thin air, they're putting their own words in there, putting it to ChatGPT, building ChatGPT, building a list, and that's then becoming their model, their data set, and you can train other things from that, and it goes and it goes and it goes. And you eventually reach that point where it'll go, I can't go any further. I'm just going to give you the same garbage back that I keep giving you now. And um, so it's that, it's, yeah, it's transparency again of where's the data come from and if, if it's safe, if it's clean, if it's been reviewed by multiple people from, with different ways of thinking, from different backgrounds. Yeah, absolutely keep training. I think it's going to lead to more marvels. So we're talking about uh, LLM generated data used to train a different LLM. So not the reduction in data set will also then fine tune from prompts back to the original LLM. So it's not just the, L, the original LLM choosing the data set. Yeah. It's almost like a, a teacher student role that it takes. But the output of that will also feed training data for one of the other ones. I, I, th I think the original training data set is still yeah. human yeah. selected. At least in and the, this case, we'll see correctly. So, so basically, uh, <laughs> I want to, to say on that that uh, you know, if it's a, um, like a text to image application, for example. You could experiment and see what comes out of that, but if it's a text to text, uh, you still have the issue that uh, you don't know what the output, the, the quality of the output. And uh, I'm thinking in, in general, further down the line, you know how you can use a large language models to generate a marketing copy to, to promote a product or a service or whatever. Uh, and that will take many marketing jobs away for sure. But uh, uh, this will also do something else. Um, if you have you heard of uh, Cory Doctorov? He's um, he's a sci-fi writer, but also a 
uh, like digital rights activist. And uh, he wrote this year uh, an article that I really recommend that I, I just loved called The Enchitification of TikTok. <laughs> And it wasn't specifically talking, I mean, it did talk about TikTok, but uh, it was talking about how, or the summary is how platforms are born and die in the end. But basically, uh, that term, enchitification, that's what uh, came to mind when I'm thinking about uh, um, uh, text generated by large open models, because syntactically, it's perfect. Perfect, more than perfect. Perfect, uh, even even better than uh, you know, uh, uh, an educated uh, uh, native speaker for sure. But uh, the style will just get blander and bland <laughs> further down the line. And then you know, what does that mean for the information we consume? You know, not, not just news. You know, if we have it generate literature or teaching kids, you know, creative writing. What are they going to learn? Uh, but yeah, this is a more philosophical point than uh, uh, you know the number of parameters used. But uh, for sure, we need to to think of uh, uh, the environmental impact of uh, uh, training those massive models. Maybe I'll close your mouth for that. I think there's maybe something to say about what you said. The phrase is you stick a thousand monkeys in a room with a typewriter and eventually you'll come out with Shakespeare. So maybe sticking in that garbage eventually you might get something beautiful out of it. I think the NHS ran a beautiful case study recently which was not necessarily looking at AI but um, machine learning and they were looking at the did not send rates for hospital and if they gave users the ability to be able to say, no I can't actually make that on this time, can you rebook me for Thursday at four o'clock? And they started to see the rate of did not attendance drop down dramatically because they gave that flexibility back to people. And it's slightly off topic of that but it's, it's the that you uncover when you start to play around with new technology and information you can give you.